Desk YouTube video series. And today we are going to do static two-point discrimination. That's right. Um, I am Big J. I'm Lil J. And we are glad that you're here and let's get on with this. We're gonna test for touch sensation. So how do we do that? We can do two things. We can use either two-point discrimination or we can use the monofilaments, which you know we all know um, is the Sems-Weinstein monofilaments. So in this case, we're going to use uh, two tools, one of two tools. Uh, the first one would be the discriminator, okay, which has two points, okay? And the second one could be the esthesiometer, or also known as the Bowley gauge, B-O-L-E-Y gauge. And you can see that that gauge can move by millimeters from different areas, uh, from this area. And then that gets us to, and I'm gonna set this six, seven, for the first one that we're gonna do. But anyway, I'm gonna come back and uh, two point discrimination we know is a test for receptor density, right? Um, and you're going to test in the fingertips when you use this. Um, and one of the things that we need to remember is when we test, okay, we are going to test parallel to the longitudinal axis. So, and the reason I say that when I look at longitudinal, I look at this way here, okay? And what you need to do is you need to consider that there is a delineation between, for example, the ulnar nerve, okay, and the median nerve distribution. And the same can be applied on the radial and the median to the opposite side of the hand. So. Right, yeah, and I think um, also just for clarification there a little bit too, the only time you would not test the fingertips, I guess, is when you're looking at the radial side of the hand, because if you test the fingertips here, you're not gonna be getting the radial nerve. Perfect, nice call, Joseph, nice call. So um, so what we really look for is, is, is we map, okay, the uh, improvement uh, after nerve repair when you're using this methodology. And keep in mind, Great test question. Which comes back first, Joseph? Moving two-point touch or static two-point touch? So it seems almost a little bit counterintuitive, but moving touch actually returns before static touch. All right. So when you look at the procedure for um, two-point discrimination, all right, uh, we test only the fingertip, as I mentioned. Um, it's the primary area used to explore touch, right? And we begin with a distance of five millimeter, okay? So in this particular case, if we show you, there's by millimeter. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's about the distance right there. It's about five millimeter, all right? So now, you want to remember that because that is the distance that they would test you on, five millimeter, okay, um, between the points. Now, for the uh, procedure, you would be looking at 10 applications. For a normal response, you would be looking, or accurate response, you would be looking to get um, at least seven out of 10, okay, when it comes to that, okay? So response, when someone says, they feel one point, another response would be two points, and then I don't know, or I don't feel it. So again, seven out of 10 is accurate. Now the norms, okay, as you can see up there on the screen, uh, we have from one to five millimeters is normal static two-point discrimination, which is why, of course, we start with five. Okay, six to 10 millimeter is fair two point static discrimination. 11 to 15 millimeter would be considered poor static two point discrimination. And then one point perceived by itself would be at least considered protective sensation only. And then finally, if you don't, you don't feel anything, then basically that's considered an anesthetic area. 
where there is no, there is lack of feeling. And that will occur a lot of times, and I see this all the time working in hand and upper extremity, we'll test the fingertips, okay, to determine that. And sometimes it's interesting because when a nerve is rejuvenating or coming back over a period of time, all of a sudden they'll get, they'll get the feeling in, their, in the tip of their finger. And now we're going to test static two-point discrimination. And where do we start? We start in the unaffected hand, right? So I've set the distance, okay, at the um, five milliliter, millimeters, okay? And now what we're going to do is, is we're going to test. And remember, we're going to test longitudinally because of the way the nerves are, right? For each one of the distributions. Right. So let's start here. And we also are going to vision occlude here. Okay, so Joseph's vision is occluded, and the first one we're going to check on the non-affected hand. Here we go, Joseph. Do you feel one point? Do you feel two points or nothing at all? Two. All right. Two. 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 So at this point, Joseph feels Okay, two points, all right, which suggests that he has, a, at this point, um, he has two-point discrimination in his non-affected hand. And now he has an idea of how I'm gonna test. So Joseph, bring it over. Now Joseph, Joseph has an ulnar nerve injury. Okay, so we're gonna make sure, again, that we, tech, we test longitudinally, okay, so that we're catching the nerve, especially on the ulnar side. So, uh, Joseph, I'm going to do the same type. Your vision is occluded, and you're going to tell me what you feel. One or two points. Two. Okay, so we're in the median nerve distribution there, and he feels accurate. Okay, same here. Two. 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 One. Okay, so at this point, okay, he feels one, okay, and that would be uh, a negative. That would be a negative response, okay. So we would say that that at this point it's inaccurate, okay, for the ulnar distribution. So and I'll come over here and again and I'll do the same touch. One. And he feels one. We know that in order to be accurate, a person has to get seven out of ten correct. Now. Let me illustrate again how you would do that. Because when you look at the fact that there are two points here and one point here, what we would probably do is we'd probably mix that up a bit, okay? So I would hit here, Joseph's vision is, is occluded, and Joseph, what do you feel? One or two points? One. Okay, uh, what do you feel? One or two points? Two. Okay. One. One. Two. One, one. All right, so now, so say we did this and Joseph was accurate on the median side of this and he was accurate seven out of 10 times or eight out of 10 times. On this side, if you noticed, I did one point and he recognized it. Okay, so at the lowest or almost at the lowest part of the tier, we know one thing for sure. Joseph has protective sensation, all right? So one point recognized is protective sensation. All right, so if we move up the ladder, then we would, ha we would have to move, okay, um, the two points. So we start at five, six to um, 10 millimeter uh, would be fair if he scores at six. So even if it's at six, okay, he would then score, okay, fair. Normal, obviously one to five. Okay, and then from there, 11 to 15 would be poor static. And then one point touch, okay, would be recognized as protective sensation. Sorry to beat that up, but at the end of the day, um, when you're using this device, it becomes inaccurate 
if you're not using, if you're not testing one point and then two points and one point, then two points. And you have the luxury of, oh, that's, there's no issue there. You know, so you can kind of move from area to area. I know Joseph's was an ulnar nerve issue. So I would have concentrated over here. I wouldn't have spent as much time over here and I'm not gonna worry about it. But if you're gonna do it accurately, okay, and you're gonna use it as a standardized tool, which it can be, then you have to do it exact. So you would have to do it 10 times on every finger and you'd have to measure the way we just did it. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So since I was not able to feel it on the owner side with the five millimeters, that's when you would move it up to between six and 10 and test I, again? Yes, so I would move it up. And then if you still couldn't feel it, well, here's what I already know. I know you can do one point, okay? So what I would do is, is I would move it further and further away until you got it, right? So between, you know, the initially between six and 10 is the next step up. And then if I have to go to 11 to 15, all right, you know, by that point, you know, you're way outside the zone. So, you know, hopefully you feel it. And then if you don't, then we're back to one point. And then if you don't feel anything at all, we know that there's, there, it's, it's basically anesthetic wise, meaning you don't feel it, okay? Um, that will be something I will do with clients, okay? Is check that uh, because sometimes they've had a, a digital nerve has been damaged, like maybe they sliced it and the doctors put it back together again. And so that's how you test it to determine it. Okay, everyone, so we've taken the time now to kind of go through it step by step. I know it's painful, through our static two-point discrimination. And, um, you know, with this, I wanna bring something to mind. Uh, we don't, uh, questions, First of all, clinical reasoning and questions, we need to kind of step back and we need to think about how to apply the information and how that's going to affect different diagnosis. And we talked a little bit about that here today. So um, for more information on this, uh, we offer an entire series on the, uh, on the OT help desk, along with its application to uh, specific diagnosis. And of course, we have thousands of questions with lots of rationales. So consider uh, considering coming to join us. And what do they gotta do, Joseph, to do that? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, we appreciate that. We want more people to see it. Tell your friends, you know, send the link out. You know, we love when you support what we do. Alrighty, uh, we look forward to seeing you next and we'll see you on the